Hey, if you want to learn how to become more efficient at uploading videos on YouTube, stick around for this entire video because I'm going to walk you through YouTube upload defaults. Plus, at the end of the video, I'm going to show you a bonus tool that can help you multiply the number of presets that you can save to YouTube. YouTube Simplify. For more videos that help you deliver your value through online video, be sure to click the subscribe button and ring the bell notification icon so you don't miss a thing. Hi, and welcome to Creator Fundamentals. My name is Dan Courier, and it is my mission to simplify YouTube so you and I can grow together. So we're talking about YouTube defaults. If you don't know what a YouTube default is, don't worry about it. We're going to cover it in this video. Uh, from your main channel, you can access YouTube defaults when you go behind the scenes on your channel, which is either going to be the new YouTube studio or the old creator studio. We'll show you how to get to both. But in this case, since I'm on the new version, we're going to be uh, getting in there through YouTube studio. So we click that link right there. That's going to bring us behind the scenes. And then we're going to go down to the bottom here and click on creator studio classic. All right, so once we're in Creator Studio Classic, we want to click on Channel, and then you'll see you have Upload Defaults. Now, when we click on Upload Defaults, you're going to see a lot of the same fields that you see when you actually access a video. Now, as you can see on mine, there's a couple, uh, there's some stuff filled in here, but we're going to look at some of the settings here and uh, kind of explain why you may want to use some settings versus the other. So, uh, it's a great idea when you are uploading to YouTube that rather than upload in a, uh, a public view where it's instantly available to people, you want to be able to upload the video and then set up your title and your metadata and your thumbnail. So what I recommend, what I do for all my videos is actually upload in the unlisted state. So you have public, unlisted, and private. Unlisted and private, you could probably go either way. I've always been in the habit of uploading as unlisted. You also have the opportunity to set a category for your video. Keep in mind that category lets YouTube know exactly what type of videos you're making. I would think for the most part, most of your videos, if you are focused on a niche, would all have the same category. So keep that in mind, uh, helping YouTube understand exactly who to share your content with. And also this next one is important, and I've seen some pretty big YouTubers get this wrong. Having your license set up here properly on your defaults can really help protect your content because I've seen some pretty big YouTubers, including some in the millions of subscribers who have this set to Creative Commons. Creative Commons basically means free use uh, for anybody that wants it. So even though these particular creators had no intention of letting anybody use their content. They had their uh, license set up to Creative Commons. You want your standard YouTube license that uh, protects it as your content. That's the way to go. Uh, title. Titles are all going to be different, uh, I would imagine, on most of your videos. So we're not going to put anything in there. But then description is another big one because... Uh, there's a couple different things I want to explain to you here uh, that we can take a look at. First of all, one of the ways to make money on YouTube above and beyond ad revenue is through affiliate links uh, and other uh, you know, merchandise, those kind of things. So you can really use the description to constantly remind people of that. In this case, I have my affiliate link to TubeBuddy. We're going to mention TubeBuddy a little bit later on, but uh, uh, it's a great way to make that available in all of your videos for people to see. Now, the other thing, if you read the description for suggested video, uh, it includes videos that are suggested from the descriptions of other videos. So one of the things that can be a good idea to help people watch more of your content and send positive signals to YouTube is to link to some of your more uh, successful videos in all of your video descriptions. So in this case, I've taken some of my more popular videos and I've included them in the YouTube defaults or the upload defaults. And basically what the upload defaults are as we go through this list, these are the this is the information that's going to populate as soon as you start to upload a video. So rather than uploading a video and having to go to the page and manually enter all this stuff every time, this is the stuff that'll automatically 
automatically get set every time you upload. So as you can see, it's super powerful for making your process more efficient. And anybody who's become a successful YouTuber has learned being efficient in the process goes a long way in helping you be successful uh, on YouTube. So you definitely want to get in the habit of getting your YouTube or upload defaults set up. And I said habit, but the reality is once you get this all squared away once, it's going to automatically populate for you. So it's not even a habit. It's just uh, get uh, all this information saved and squared away one time. And uh, then it's just going to be available for you going forward. So uh, definitely an awesome thing that you want to do uh, to get this set up and make your videos more efficient. So Again, all of those links that you might that you want to share with people on a regular basis. Keep in mind, if your channel is growing, if you're a newer channel, you do want to give some consideration about not pushing people off the platform. So perhaps uh, in the beginning, you just want to include a bunch of links that uh, recycle or redirect people into your own content. That's a great a great path on that. But uh, um, beyond the description, there's some other settings down here. Uh, if you have a monetized channel, for example, you have the option to automatically monetize. You have the permit. The this is where you would have the ability to prevent people from uh, commenting on, as well as determining whether or not you want to uh, kind of screen comments for potentially uh, inappropriateness. Uh, you can do that here and set that so it's automatically set for all your videos. But by default, I allow comments and I hold potential ones for review. Um, and most of these other ones I don't pay a lot of attention to. Users can view ratings for this video. I'm not even sure what that means and I don't really care. Uh, ad formats, I keep all my ad formats on. You might as well give any advertiser who wants to uh, spend a little bit of money on your content the opportunity to do so. So I always leave the ad formats all um, uh, set and checked. So. Again, whatever your, ink, your whatever your video language is, it's good to have it set by default. Uh, community contributions. Community contributions are the ability for people uh, who watch your videos to submit translations, including titles, descriptions, and subtitles, closed caption, that sort of thing. So that's a good idea. Um, in another video, we can show you exactly where you go to do that, but you can automatically set that for all your videos, and I think it's a good idea to be able to... Uh, allow people who are interested in doing that for you for free to uh, to let them do that. So caption certification, not something I typically use. I usually leave it uh, as is. And video statistics, I leave that as well. So this is basically what you would do. You go through and you save all of this information once and Every time you click the upload button, all the stuff is going to be populated. All these settings are going to be applied. So you have the consistency from video to video, and it just saves you a ton of time. Now, I mentioned to you that there was going to be a bonus, and in the upper right-hand corner, you can actually see the bonus that I am uh, referring to, and that is TubeBuddy. TubeBuddy, above and beyond being the number one browser plugin for managing and growing your YouTube channel, has a variety of little tools, including this one, that can really help you become more efficient on the platform and uh, really help take your YouTube channel to the next level. With the standard YouTube interface, it gives you one screen for upload defaults. What TubeBuddy allows you to do is to create multiple profiles. So this one right here is obviously the default for for um, YouTube. It's what that upload default is every time you upload. But for me, I also do live streams and the information on my live streams are pretty consistent because I just do a YouTuber live stream where people can come and hang out. So all of the information on a live stream is always the same, but it is a little bit different than what I do for my standard videos. So while I have all this for my standard videos, TubeBuddy allows me to set up a second profile called live stream that I named. That was the name that I choose to give it. And as you can see, I've changed this and I've set it up so my title's pre-filled. I have a specific description that is strictly for um, live streams that talks about the layout and the interface that people see when they join my live streams. And we have some other tweaks in here as well, as well as tags because the tags for my live streams are all so consistent. So you can save all of this stuff in these profiles, in the upload defaults, and it saves you a bunch of time. When you take the upload default, 
uh, basic screen that YouTube provides. You pair that up with TubeBuddy, then it gives you, at the very least, two different profiles where if you do live streams or perhaps you do two different series or uh, you know something specific where you want the variations, you can quickly toggle between each one and uh, use it that way. So really powerful stuff. The way the live stream one works, obviously, by default when you upload, it's going to use the YouTube one. Uh, but when you go to set up a new live stream, when you schedule a new live stream, this appears on the screen. You simply click this, it pre-fills all the live stream information, and then you're good to go. You schedule the live stream, and when it goes out, it's going to have all that information. So super powerful stuff, definitely uh, helpful in maximizing your time by making it as efficient as possible for you to... Uh, not waste time doing all the little things that you have to do with every single video. So that's it, YouTube defaults, pretty straightforward. Hope you found this helpful. So the bonus tool is TubeBuddy. TubeBuddy is a free plugin that you can set up on your browser. It will allow you to multiply the number of upload defaults you can save on YouTube. It can be a real time saver and a game changer for your channel. You can try it for free at trytubebuddy.today. Let me know in the comments below, did you even know upload defaults existed and are you currently taking advantage of them the way we've outlined in this video let me know in the comments below I'd love to hear your thoughts and hey if we didn't cover a certain way that you're using them to make the process more efficient I definitely want to hear about that in the comments as well